The successor to the world's fastest air fighter is finally ready for action. After a decade of speculations and unconfirmed rumors regarding the development of the SR-72, the United States has officially revealed details that have stunned the entire world. This revelation, including the capabilities and design of the Son of Blackbird, has sent shockwaves throughout the aviation world, leaving the enemies of the U.S. unsettled. What are the advanced capabilities of this futuristic aircraft? Which of the rumors regarding this aircraft are true? Join us as we explore the capabilities of the U.S. secret SR-72 Dark Star, which has finally entered production for 2025. After the SR-71 was retired by the United States Air Force in 1998, they were faced with a huge challenge since the only aircraft that is useful for its intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capabilities had been eliminated. This challenge brought about the development of a worthy successor, the Son of Blackbird. The SR-72 was first mentioned in 2007 when reports circulated that Lockheed Martin was working on a new super-fast aircraft that would take over from the already retired SR-71. The report also mentioned its capabilities, revealing that it is designed with the ability to reach exceptional speeds over Mach 6, which is more than 6,400 kilometers per hour, making it twice as fast as the SR-71. This aircraft was definitely being designed for the United States Air Force. However, since the vague report, no official details were released. But some concept art and interesting information have leaked over time. Even with these rumors and leaks, the USAF initially did not confirm or deny that Lockheed Martin had discussed the aircraft with them. In 2013, it was reported that the United States declined to fund the SC-72 program. This report made it quite unclear if the USAF has officially allowed Lockheed Martin to build a prototype. However, Lockheed Martin has eventually announced that they are working on the SR-72 and a prototype might fly soon. Along with the announcement, there were interviews with Brad Leland, Lockheed Martin's hypersonics program manager, who had led the project for those seven years. Leland was quoted in a press release, which has since been removed saying that hypersonic aircraft combined with hypersonic missiles could fly into restricted areas and hit almost any target across a continent in less than an hour. Increasing speed will be the next major advancement in aviation, and it will be essential to deal with new threats in the future. This technology will be a game changer, much like how stealth technology transformed warfare today. It was also revealed that they are also working with Aerojet Rocketdyne on the project, which is still in the concept stage. Even if the project doesn't succeed, it will help with developing hypersonic missiles and provide useful lessons. One reason why the SR-72 is deemed special is because its creation is based on the next big step in aviation, which will be increasing speed, a component that is very important to deal with future threats. This new technology will definitely be a major game changer, similar to how stealth technology changed warfare today. The new high-speed aircraft will use a unique engine which is like having two or even three different jet engines in one. According to Leland, the propulsion system starts with a regular turbofan engine, like the Pratt and Whitney F-100 or General Electric F-10. This engine will help the aircraft take off and reach speeds similar to regular fighter jets. But when the jet reaches around Mach 3, the second part of the engine will kick in to give extra speed. The second part of the engine is believed to be a dual-mode ramjet, which uses the high-pressure air from supersonic speeds in a special inlet design to create shock waves for compression. This setup could push the aircraft beyond the SR-71's top speed of Mach 3.2, past the hypersonic speed of Mach 5, and maybe even beyond Mach 10, as seen with the fictional Dark Star jet, built with Skunk Works. This type of engine is called a turbine-based combined cycle engine, and while Lockheed Martin designed the aircraft, AE2 Rocketdyne was in charge of making the engine. The aircraft was planned to fly at speeds over Mach 6 and was designed as an intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance aircraft with the ability to carry weapons for striking ground targets. In May 2015, the plan Lockheed Martins had for the SR-72 was to use it for spying and attacking, known as ISR and strike. However, they are yet to decide on the exact things it would carry, called payloads. 
This is probably because more than regular payloads would be needed for a jet flying at Mach 6, up in the sky at 80,000 feet. So to make this work, they would need to create new sensors and weapons just for the SR-72, because the available weapons wouldn't be able to keep up with the super fast flying and high altitude of this formidable jet. This points out the need to invent new weapons that can handle the speed and height of the SR-72 to make it a successful spy and attack machine. Leland also pointed out that this new hypersonic aircraft could be used to launch hypersonic missiles. However, it's now more likely that the aircraft will carry cheaper weapons specifically designed to work at high speeds. Hypersonic missiles being developed in the U.S. come in different designs, but they are all much more expensive than regular weapons. Flying at high speeds creates a lot of pressure and heat, which makes it tough to drop or launch weapons, but it's not impossible. Lockheed proved this by launching air-to-air -air missiles at speeds over Mach 3 with the YF-12, a version of the SR-71 made for combat. But the SR-72's ability to quickly gather intelligence about any target on Earth is just as important, especially in conflicts that might take place over large areas of the Pacific. Although people often think satellites provide constant global surveillance, there aren't enough of them in orbit to cover everything. Also, because satellite orbits are predictable, it's easy to hide information from them. This has led to funding for many new spy planes, from the MQ-1 Predator to more advanced secret models like the Northrop Grumman RQ-1880. Despite all the money spent on these spy planes, they all fly at slower subsonic speeds. This means getting intelligence quickly depends on where the plane is and if it's available. For instance, the MQ-9 can fly for more than 24 hours, but with a cruising speed of just 230 miles per hour, it would take over an hour to fly between New York and Boston and more than 10 hours for a cross-country trip. A hypersonic aircraft that can reach Mach 6 could fly from New York to Boston in less than five minutes and from New York to Los Angeles in about 30 minutes. Rob Weiss, the executive vice president of Skunk Works at Lockheed Martin, shared with the media that they had completed testing the turbine-based hypersonic engine for the SR-72. He also said they were preparing to work on a flight research version of the SR-72. This test model was about the size of an F-22 Raptor and designed to show how it could take off using a regular jet engine, speed up to supersonic levels, and then switch to a dual-mode scramjet engine to reach speeds over Mach 6. By September 2017, some people reported seeing the aircraft flying over Palmdale, California, where Skunk Works is located. In February 2018, Jack Oyan, Vice President of Strategy at Lockheed Martin, confirmed that the SR-72 flight vehicle was already in the air. He also told the Wall Street Journal that it was agile at hypersonic speeds and that the engine was starting reliably. As the SR-72 attracted more attention, Russian President Vladimir Putin revealed new Russian weapons, including two missile systems that could fly faster than Mach 5, which is quite impressive. After this announcement, Lockheed Martin took down all references to the SR-72 from its website and stopped giving updates from its executives. However, the company continued to work as though the SR-72 had never been part of their projects. In the second quarter of 2022, Lockheed Martin reported losing $225 million on a secret aeronautics project. But three months later, new reports showed that the customer agreed to change the contract terms and pricing, meaning Lockheed Martin wouldn't have to cover all the extra costs. Now with the losses reaching $335 million, it seems the project's overall budget is much higher. This suggests that a very secret aircraft is being developed for the U.S. Air Force and that the project has moved from early development to full production. There is also evidence of a new production facility being built at the Skunk Works headquarters in Palmdale, California, named Building 648. A lot of new workers have been hired to manufacture something in this facility, which was completed in August 2021. Lockheed Martin has called this 215,000-square-foot building an intelligent, flexible factory designed to save time and money when setting up new production lines. They do this using advanced artificial intelligence, augmented reality, and large robots called Cobras, or combined operation bolting and robotic auto drill systems. At the time, Skunk Works showed off these new robots while working on the X-59 Quiet Supersonic Transport Test Aircraft, or Quest. But looking at other information, it seems Skunk Works is working on more than just one or two test projects in Building 648. 
From February 2018, when the SR-72 disappeared from public view, until September 2023, Lockheed Martin expanded its Advanced Development Programs Unit by 75%. They hired over 2,300 new workers, with many more job openings still posted. Skunk Works officials have hinted that they are currently producing something on a small scale. In 2022, John Clark, the general manager of Skunk Works, told the press that they were involved in low-rate production, but couldn't reveal the exact details due to security concerns. He confirmed that these activities were happening in Palmdale. Clark also mentioned that while Skunk Works is known for making prototypes quickly, they have also built advanced aircraft like the SR-71 and F-117. This shows that Skunk Works is not just focused on experimental planes, but also on creating high-end operational aircraft. According to Clark, he has tried to emphasize that they do more than just one-off experimental planes. This has allowed him to grow Skunk Works in line with its historical role, while the SR-72 program was once seen as just a rumor. Over the years, more evidence has come out suggesting that the SR-72 might actually exist. The confirmation that the Son of Blackbird is truly being created doesn't make all the information about it, right? What are these pieces of information that are quite misleading? Let's check out some of these facts. Many people know and even refer to the SR-72 as the Dark Star, but this is not accurate. The aircraft doesn't have an official nickname yet, though it's sometimes referred to as Son of Blackbird. Military aircraft usually get their nicknames, like the F-15 Eagle, through a mix of history, practicality, and military rules. This happens after the Air Force officially accepts the aircraft. The name Dark Star was used for a fictional jet in the 2022 movie Top Gun Maverick. Lockheed Martin built a model of this jet for the film. The model was about 69.5 feet long with a wingspan of 5.5 feet. Some of the parts, like the controls inside the cockpit, were actual prototypes from Lockheed Martin. The model was used for filming the ground scenes, and it helped the visual effects team create the flying scenes. An F-18 jet was used for takeoff and flying scenes, but these were later replaced by a digital version. Another true fact is that Lockheed Martin has been trying to create several faster versions of the SR-71 since 1998, but hasn't been successful. As part of the DARPA Falcon project, Lockheed Martin Skunk Works developed the hypersonic technology vehicle 2, a rocket-launched aircraft. This project aimed to collect data on things like how the vehicle moves through the air, how it's guided, and how it handles high heat. The HTB-2 had its first flight in April 2010 and a second one in August 2011, reaching speeds up to Mach 20, which is about 20,900 kilometers per hour. The lessons learned from the HTV-2 are now being used to improve the design of the SR-72. What exactly is the HTV-2? It is an unmanned aircraft that was built to fly through Earth's atmosphere at extreme speeds and was equipped with the ability to go from New York City to Los Angeles in under 12 minutes. Also, the SR-72 is expected to be a hypersonic reconnaissance aircraft with advanced technology designed for missions similar to the SR-71. It will be able to hit targets anywhere in the world within an hour if equipped with hypersonic missiles, like the high-speed strike weapon from Lockheed Martin. The aircraft's high speed should help it get through protected airspace easily, in theory. The U.S. Air Force's plan for hypersonic technology supports the development of the SR-72, which might also be used for combat missions. Another confirmed rumor is that the SR-72 is believed to have two types of engines. Regular jet engines, like turbojets and turbofans, are good for takeoff and landing at slower speeds, but can't keep up at hypersonic speeds. On the other hand, engines that work at hypersonic speeds can't be used during takeoff and landing. So the SR-72 will definitely be using a turbine engine to reach speeds of Mach 3. After that, a dual-mode ramjet will take over to keep the aircraft flying at hypersonic speeds. The SR-72 will likely use very advanced materials. Unlike earlier experimental aircraft like the X-43 and X-51, which were built mainly to test scramjet technology, the SR-72 is expected to have more features and abilities. It may be made with materials like carbon-carbon composites, which can handle more heat than the titanium used in the SR-71. One of the big challenges for the SR-72 is managing the heat caused by flying at Mach 6. There are two possible solutions for this. 
One is using a cold structure, like the heat-resistant tiles on space shuttles, and the other is using a warm structure with materials like titanium. The SR-72 is also expected to be designed for speed, stealth, and flexibility. The prototype might include advanced systems like AI for autonomous flight, which earlier hypersonic planes didn't have. However, stealth may not work as well because the materials that absorb radar might not handle high temperatures, and the plane's heat trail could be seen on radar. Still, its extreme speed would allow it to escape most non-hypersonic missiles, making these concerns less important. It might need to use a special type of fuel. Like the SR-71, it could use an exotic fuel like JP-7, which was designed specifically for the SR-71's high-speed missions. JP-7 had a high flashpoint, making it safer because it was less likely to catch fire at lower temperatures. It also helped cool the plane's engines and systems. However, Lockheed Martin is looking into using regular fuel to make things simpler and cheaper. This aircraft might be ready by 2030. However, in 2017, Lockheed Martin said the hypersonic engine was ready for real-world use after years of testing. A single-engine prototype could start flying by 2025, and a twin-engine version could be in service by 2030. Though the Dark Star in Top Gun Maverick isn't real, the SR-72 is a real project still in development, with many details kept secret. The SR-72 is not the only magnificent aircraft being developed and expected to be operational by 2030. Let's check out the capabilities of the United States sixth-generation fighter. The NGAD would be designed with advanced stealth capabilities beyond fifth-generation aircraft, enhancing low observability across various wavelengths to counter future threats. The twin-engine design will offer greater thrust, fuel efficiency, and reduced heat emissions. NGAD will emphasize lightweight composites, allowing for more payload capacity and increased endurance for extended operations in vast regions like the Western Pacific. Its arsenal will include both kinetic and non-kinetic weapons, leveraging electronic warfare for rapid, lethal responses. The electronic warfare suite will ensure comprehensive situational awareness, integrated with other systems through agile electronics and sensor fusion. Offboard support will enable secure networking with other aircraft in control of drones, enhancing lethality and survivability. The aircraft's open architecture will allow for continuous adaptation to new technologies without dependency on specific suppliers. Digital engineering will streamline development, production, and maintenance, reducing costs and improving lifecycle support. NGAD's design features will surpass existing capabilities, ensuring the U.S. Air Force maintains air superiority over potential adversaries. The Secretary of the United States Air Force, Frank Kendall, revealed that each new futuristic fighter will cost multiple hundreds of millions. But for now, let us focus on what this plane might be like in the future and put money worries aside. When this fighter is ready, it will undeniably become the most expensive one ever developed, beating even the F-22 Raptor, which is currently the most expensive air fighter that has been developed. This new fighter plane is expected to use really advanced engines unlike any other fighter jets, which should be ready by 2025. They initially wanted to make these new fighters really quickly, like they did with planes in the 1950s. That is why the Air Force's total request for the NGAD program has gone up from about $1.9 billion to almost $2.76 billion. The Pentagon plans to spend a billion dollars on the program over the next five years, and at least $40 billion in total for the creation of this technology. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.